St. Peter's Church still functions the way Hebron's early churches and other local organizations once did. They are always aware of the needs of others and care for their fellow Hebron folks. Frederick, for good, Frederick Phelps Bissell, St. Peter's once upon a time warden, treasurer, and caretaker, kept a journal from 1847 until his death in 1905. In it, he shared the daily weather, his farm activities, illnesses and deaths of townspeople and relatives, his voluntary and elected town duties, and his many tasks connected to St. Peter's Church. For St. Peter's, F.P. Bissell made repairs to the sanctuary, assisted with the installation of the 1860 Johnson organ, helped demolish and replace the rotting steeple, helped raise or build the parsonage, gathered the greens and decorated the church every Christmas, cared for the cemetery and more. Although he was always ready to help out, his Sunday service attendance record wasn't quite as good. He doesn't mention monthly fundraising dinners, but he does speak of summer picnics with chowder and fish fries, and specifically of a church social oyster supper with 110 people present. For the community, among other responsibilities, he served on the Board of Relief to help the town poor when they needed food, wood, shelter, medical care, or funeral costs. F.P. Bissell's work ethic matches many of today's St. Peter's congregation. Frequently seen are members painting, assisting with parish projects like tag sales or pumpkin festivals, buying and or cooking products needed for the special monthly dinners, baking desserts, arranging public events that are held at St. Peter's, and much, much more. St. Peter's Church remains a community-centered organization. St. Peter's shares. It shares its facilities with any individual or group. It shares Phelps Hall, use of the certified kitchen, use of the church for ecumenical events, concerts, etc. In fact, it welcomes community use. St. Peter's members work their tails off to raise money for the church. And then, what do they do with the money raised? They share it with the community. Local nonprofits are selected as the recipients of this sharing. The Hebron Historical Society has been one of the lucky ones. Your help is greatly appreciated. Bob, thank you very much for inviting me to share with you uh, the Troop 28 scouting program here in Hebron. Uh, my name is Ed Fournier. I am the uh, Scoutmaster for Troop 28 here in Hebron. Uh, troop 28 is a, uh, it's a, it's a Boy Scout troop that also has a uh, component of Troop 1028, which is also the, uh, the girls. So the BSA here in Hebron is comprised of both uh, young boys and young women. And I'm proud to uh, uh, be here representing both of them today. So um, thank you, Father Ron. Recently, Father Ron, reached out to me when we were at a gathering together. Um, he invited us to um, come look at your facilities and um, see if he could uh, reach out to us and see if he could be of help. Interestingly enough, at that time in, in our program, we were having uh, difficulty finding space. So the, uh, the meeting was a chance, but opportune meeting for, for us as a program. And I wanna thank you, Father Ron, and, and Rob for reaching out to me because uh, uh, the, the, the bonds that we form here last a lifetime and, and certainly help help our program. So, um, you know, one of the things that we've been struggling with is, is indoor and outdoor space. And I met Father Ron at St. Peter's Preserve and we looked at the, um, the spaces that you have, not only in the outdoor altar, but in the campfire. Um, and they're just gonna fulfill a hole that we have um, in our program. And interestingly enough, last night we held our first campfire meeting. Um, it was our fall kickoff meeting last evening, um, and it was a tremendous success uh, by the campfire um, with a number of 
community leaders um, speaking to our boys about leadership. And, and uh, Representative, State Representative Kathy Osten, um, Sean Connolly, former um, candidate for governor of Connecticut, and also uh, Steve Weir, who is the current uh, candidate for um, the state Senate. So they were by your campfire side, um, talking to our boys and our troop about leadership. So thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to make that happen. We really appreciate that. Through your help and through your um, outreach, we can do that not only um, missing what we've missed for the past six months was meeting in person, but we can do it with in front of our parents and our, and our, and our community leaders. Our program is also staffed with great community leaders as well and volunteers that have given back to their community and have gone through our program uh, that help us as our current leadership set those seeds of morality, character, kindness, and giving. And those seeds return a bountiful harvest that help all of us right here in our own community. And, and, and for that, I thank you for allowing us to, uh, to help continue that um, to continue that, continue that tradition in person. You know, our, our scouts this fall are gonna be taking two Eagle Scout projects. Um, both of those are at St. Peter's Preserve, which is helping to replace um, trail markers, trail marker signs, clean up the, sun, clean up the trails, um, and, and provide signage at those intersections so that way that, that land can be utilized without fear of getting lost. And, and also with the safety and security of knowing where you are. So those are projects that are gonna be happening this fall. Um, and, and this relationship that we're forging, I'm sure will have a greater impact upon where they choose to select their projects and those younger scouts coming up. So you see the gift is far more than just a community outreach. It creates a healthy, vibrant community that is in touch with the youth of today that will become our leaders for tomorrow. So for that, I thank both you, Rob, and Father Ron for reaching out to me and allowing us to form that partnership that will, that will help all of us, your program and ours into the future. More importantly today, I just wanted to say thank you very much for, for reaching out to me and helping our program in the time that we needed it most. So thank you, Father Ron, and thank you to the St. Peter's community for that opportunity. We appreciate it. Thank you. Dear Father Ron and parishioners of St. Peter's, over the years, St. Peter's has provided support to Hebron Interfaith Human Services with financial support, food drives, volunteers, and the delicious cookie platters at Christmas. We are so appreciative of the connection we have with St. Peter's. It is through collaboration that we can continue to serve the greater community. This year has certainly been one of great challenges and sacrifices for many people. Here at the food pantry, we have witnessed the number of people needing assistance increase dramatically. We take pride in the fact that we have remained a client choice food pantry, meaning the clients get to choose what food they take home. This is so important as it provides them a small feeling of control in an otherwise uncontrollable world. We currently have 620 families registered to use our food pantry. Their usage varies from weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or even more sporadic based on their need. Whatever the amount they visit the pantry, our goal is to make them feel welcomed, respected, and valued. On an average month, we see approximately 275 families use the food pantry. We also offer weekend food bags for kids, and that number can vary from 30 to 100 kids monthly. The amount of food distributed in a typical month is 30,000 plus pounds, which translates to 20, 25,000 or so meals. We look forward to continuing our work families for families in need and our long-standing relationship with St. Peter's. In service and friendship, Krista Goodwin Babka, Director HIHS. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the history of your business. My name is Michelle Nicholson and I'm the owner of the Flower Girl Bakery here in Hebron. Um, I am a small cottage food bakery um, that is looking to expand. I started uh, baking back in January of this year by baking a couple loaves of bread every day for friends of mine and uh, close customers. 
And as the last few months have progressed, the business has continued to grow. When COVID hit, we um, had a hard time finding flour and bread in the grocery stores anymore. And uh, my ability to continue baking bread ended up turning the business into something that was much bigger than it was originally. And um, it started getting bigger and bigger as word of mouth spread. And now I'm in a situation where I'm looking for more space to bake out of. Oh, great. And I heard you ran into some difficulties uh, along the way. We had a lot of trouble with different things, both where people were going to pick up the bread because the traffic started to get to be too much for my neighborhood. And then we ran into issues about where I would potentially be able to bake. Um, commercial kitchens aren't something that people are usually just handing out to bakers to use um, on their own. And I went through a lot of different options before I finally ended up here. Um, when I talked to Father Ron, he was so welcoming and he seemed so genuinely excited to have me here. Um, it just was, it was a perfect fit and it was, it was just an awesome experience to be able to come in and have access to a kitchen that's not mine, but felt like it could be mine for a little while um, during the time that I was here. So. Great, and uh, how is uh, you know how is the use of the kitchen and some of the resources here at St. Peter's, how is that gonna help you and, and your business? So having access to a commercial kitchen is unbelievable. I've been putting out a lot of products and I have one oven and a small kitchen in my house. So being able to use this amount of space is like a dream for me. Um, I can bake four or five times as much as I can in my own kitchen in the same amount of time and it goes faster and easier. Um, the ability to use this space has allowed me to test what I can do with my business and how much I can accomplish so that as I make decisions moving forward about expansion, I can decide what I might be able to expand to while still keeping my life um, with my kids as much normal as possible. Mm -hmm. And I heard that uh, there's been more to it than just using the kitchen. There's been some uh, community and partnerships. You know, What yes. are some of the things you've uh, experienced here in your short time that you've been uh, here? So the community partnerships in the time that I've been here so far, which was a kind of a quick start, but um, last weekend with the turkey dinner, um, I was able to make all of the sweet rolls for the dinner. I was able to test my skills using the big kitchen and then donate all of the rolls to the church dinner. Um, I advertised the dinner to my customers, so I know some of them came to get the, the dinner because I advertised and I've gotten new customers since the dinner happened because they saw my name on the rolls that went out with the dinner. So it's definitely a win-win situation there. Um, I think that even having our booth set up out front with a sign is drawing people into the church that maybe didn't know as much about the church and um, at the same time I think that having our bakery there where those people coming into the church anyways is helping expose the bakery um, that people didn't know about before. That's great I think uh, you might have even sold a few pumpkins too right? Yep we've been selling pumpkins <laughs> when the bread booth is open a lot of times people come and buy pumpkins while we're here and we just kind of keep the cash to pass over to the church and sometimes people are here to buy pumpkins and they end up um, taking business cards for the bread at the same time. That's great. And uh, you're, you're pretty big in, in the community as well. You do other things besides baking. Uh, I know you might, you said, I think you might have mentioned Girl Scouts and a yes. couple other things. So, so I'm a Girl Scout troop leader. Um, so my Girl Scout troop is uh, fourth grade and um, we are very, very active in the community. In fact, last year we made all of the pies for the Hebron Interfaith for the food pantry for the um, Thanksgiving. Um, just my troop made, I think, 45 pies last year for wow. that um, organization. We do a ton of work in the community with the Girl Scout troop. We raise a lot of money for organizations. Um, I'm also the president of the Hebron Education Foundation, and we, um, you know, we're always looking for space. Uh, not right now, but we're always looking for space to do events and fundraisers and things like that, where we can um, get community members together to raise money for our schools. So that's great. And uh, anything else you want to finish up with as far as, you know, the partnership between St. Peter's and your business or? Um, no, I just, I mean, I would thank all of the people at St. Peter's because I can't even explain how grateful I am to have been welcomed so warmly into the parish. Um, people just seem generally very excited to have me here. And um, it's just such a great feeling after hitting so many roadblocks to be welcomed into this community and being able to be given access to something that's really allowing me to test the waters for my business. That's awesome. 
And then one final thing, if, uh, if anyone's a little bit hungry after hearing this video, how do they, uh, how do they find out uh, more about how to order More about the bread. <laughs> they can visit my website, which is The Flower Girl. Um, and my Facebook page has all the information about the ordering process. Awesome. Well, thanks, Michelle. We appreciate the, the time you have this morning. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jill Zorn, and I'm president of United Brethren of Hebron Synagogue. Our congregation truly values our connection with St. Peter's. To us, you embody the concept of community. It's not just a word, but a value that you consistently put into action. And here are just a few examples. Several times in the past, when our synagogue was hosting the annual Thanksgiving interface service, or when we needed more space for our own Hanukkah celebrations, you opened Phelps Hall to us for post-service refreshments. And then when we were raising money to install a new furnace, St. Peter's came through with a donation from the proceeds of one of your famous monthly community dinners. Most recently, our two congregations were working diligently together to plan the first community Passover Seder to be held in many years in Hebron. Serving on the planning committee, I really got to know the can-do attitude and the generous spirit of Father Ron and of all of your members. It was going to be a wonderful event held in Phelps Hall with great food and a meaningful service before the coronavirus shut the whole thing down. In good times and difficult times, I know our synagogue can count on St. Peter's, our friend and our neighbor, and I look forward to continued connection and collaboration. All right, good morning. So for those of you that, that might not know you, uh, can you give us a brief introduction about the LeMays, a little bit of your history and, and what you're doing now? Well, let's see. Um, I've been with St. Peter's a long time. I uh, came in when Father Doug was there. I want to say that's back in probably the early 50s. And then, uh, you know, my parents got, and my father Doug met my parents, my foster parents, Brad and Betty Batson, and uh, they were very interested in the church. And uh, it just worked out that they became members and being a member of their family, of course, I came along too. And uh, it's been a good experience. And uh, we've kind of been with the church ever since. There was a period of time when we lived in Hartford, which I kind of grew away from the church for a while. But, when we moved back to Hebron, we came back, and uh, it's been good. I've been the treasurer a couple of different times. I've been on the vestry a few times. Uh, and Barbara's been very active in the church, she, especially uh, late, because uh, she used to help out. We both did help out with the dinners. You know, we'd, we'd, she'd, she'd run the dessert table, and I would serve with the other people involved. And it was, it was very, very nice. And uh, different events that the church has. Oh, over the years, the uh, church has grown. It's been static, but it's grown at times and you know up and down. But lately, it's been growing again. And I think one of the reasons is the community involvement with the different things that the church has to offer. And uh, that's been a, a blessing because it's it's helped the treasury quite a bit. And uh, as I say, I'm still a member, and uh, good Lord willing. <laughs> See where it goes. <laughs> Great. And uh, now you guys are in Florida now, is that correct? Yes. We, uh, in uh, about a year ago, we, uh, it was a long, hard decision. We decided to move to Florida and, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> and, uh, and it's been a good move. Uh, we like it down here very much. Uh, Even though you're in Florida, uh, I, I know you've been attending some of the virtual coffee hours here at St. Peter's that they're having each Wednesday. And, and how has that worked out for, for that's, both of you? Uh, that, that's pretty exciting. Uh, we uh, we kind, of, kind of look forward to it each week. Uh, it's part of our schedule now. And uh, it's, it's one way to connect with, with people we know up there. And also, Father Ron has been excellent. And, you know, he's been good at running these, these meetings. And it gives us a chance to talk to different people about different things that are going on here and up there. So it's, it's been very good. We enjoy it immensely. That's great. And uh, I think you might have even attended a few of the uh, online services that we've had as well. For, yes. uh, yeah. So how have those, how have those uh, been so far? Barbara's more regular than I am, but I've attended a couple and they've been very good. Uh, 
although we're here, you, you, you still like you're a part of it, but 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 you're not. <laughs> you're just there through a camera. But it's it's good. It's another way another way to connect. Although we can't talk, it's okay. I mean, we're part of the service then, so that's good. Right, right, great. And um, I mean, through all of this, has St. Peter's made you feel like you're still part of our community, even though you're hundreds of miles apart in in Florida? I think I think that's true. Uh, even though we're here, um, it's uh, you know between the coffee hours and the church services, it's the one way to connect with the church. St. Peter's been good to me, and I've tried to serve back, and it's been good. Although I can't do it now from here, it's it's one way I can connect with the church, and it is it's good. It's it's a very active. I think it's a very active parish, and just whatever you want to do as a member, you you can you can choose what you want to do, and that you're part of it and serve the community that way. It's been it's been very good. Hi everybody, it's Teresa Giordano, Executive Director at AHM Youth and Family Services. On behalf of our Board of Directors and our staff, I want to thank our friends at the St. Peter's Episcopal Church for all of your years of support for our children's organization. Since joining the AHM staff a little over a year ago, it's been a pleasure and honor of meeting a number of your congregation's members. Um, who serve on our Czech Coalition, as well as on the Nature and Adventure Day Committee. Um, there are other members of the church who have quietly um, worked so generously to help us meet the needs of our local children and families, and I thank you for that. Since joining the AHM staff, I have come to see firsthand the wonderful community partnerships with your church, and I thank you sincerely for making the lives of local children and families in the towns we serve a kinder and safer world for each one of them. So thank you and God bless. Good afternoon. This is Joel Rosenberg speaking with you today from the AHM Youth and Family Services Center. Just a hop, skip and a jump away from the church. To all of our friends at St. Peter's Episcopal Church, we at AHM cannot thank you enough for the 36 year partnership that we've had with your congregation. So many of your members over the years have been actively involved with AHM outside the four walls of your beautiful and historic church by serving on the AHM Board of Directors, on our Juvenile Review Board, on the Regional Community Drug Task Force, and for the past several years on the St. Peter's and AHM Trails Committee. It is through this wonderful community partnership that today there are programs available for local residents of all ages, including the Chores Program for local seniors, the Lanterns Mentoring Program for local school children, Family Counseling Services, the Smart Recovery Program, and so much more. And of course, there's the ever popular Nature and Adventure Day for which the church plays such a huge role. We all hope to hold that event and many more programs like it again in the future. Our best to you all during these uncertain times. We treasure our work together. We thank you for all that you've done to support AHM and we look forward to many more years of supporting this important community work together as your neighbors and as your friends. Have a nice day.